yellow lady slipper or moccasin flower due to the shape of the actual flower itself um, looking like a little shoe or a slipper. Um, this is a beautiful native orchid that's quite rare actually and it's rare for several different reasons I'll explain in just a second. But this one's in full bloom. Um, you can see it's uh, it, it has this particular peculiar shaped you know again orchid flower and it, uh, usually it's pollinated by bumblebees that have to actually fly in there and uh, bumble around uh, get the pollen and find it again Be uh, find another flower because it does not produce a lot of rewards um, it's not a favorite place for the bumblebee to visit so uh, the bees got to come in and basically make a mistake twice of going into this flower and then uh, it'll finally produce uh, produce its seeds. The seeds that this produces are tiny, like many orchid flowers are, and so have almost no reserves. They're wind uh, wind dispersed, and so they'll they have to land in a certain place because the reason. And again, this is a nice little patch of lady slippers through here. The reason um, that orchids are not com uh, commercially sold, uh, native orchids. Um, is partially because of a symbiotic relationship they have to have with a fungus. So if you were to dig this up, um, you would probably kill the fungus and it would die. If the seed does not land in the proper place where the proper fungus is, it will not germinate. It has no stores, energy stores, and so it dies as well. So it makes this a rarity. Um, you couple that with the fact that, if again, if you do try to dig it up, you'll kill it. And it's been commercially collected quite a bit. So please don't buy this. Um, even if they, they, they inoculate the, the, inoculate the uh, soil, um, the potting mixture with the right kinds of fungus, the fungus will probably or, or, or may die if you transplant it. So um, it's, it's not likely to survive. So don't support that kind of thing. It's, it's not something sustainable. But uh, it's also a favorite of deer. And so uh, it's got a lot of things stacked up against it. It's got to land in the right spot. It's got to have a mistake of the bumblebee visiting it several times. But it can live for quite a long time feeding uh, using this uh, partnership with the fungus. So even if it doesn't get a lot, of, a lot of sun or if it gets, you know, chopped away a couple of times, it will can survive uh, 40 years maybe. But um, it can't continuously do this, of course, if the soil is disturbed or if it keeps not being able to produce an energy because the leaves are gone. And since it's a deer favorite, like many of our orchids are, um, that can form, uh, that can be a, a huge issue. Luckily, we have nice patch room here, some in bud. Um, this one already in bloom um, here in uh, Linden, uh, Virginia, uh, over at the Thompson Wildlife Management Area, uh, a Virginia Native Plant Society registry site. And uh, because they hunt deer here, uh, it's a managed area, we don't have a big problem with that. It means many, many wildflowers from the trilliums and so forth that you see to, of course, our native orchids, and there's several here, um, several different kinds here, um, that can survive uh, because of this area is well managed and there's not an overabundance of, uh, of white-tailed deer. So a beautiful native orchid, lady slippers, moccasin flower. Um, this one's yellow moccasin flower, yellow lady slippers, a native orchid of our woodlands, rich woodlands, which has a symbiotic relationship with fungi.